Doug, you guys have been the best team all season long. Best team in the postseason coming into this 12 and 2. Game four, could, we looked at as mostly an anomaly for a lot of reasons. How good did you feel at tip tonight? <laughs> <laughs> My whole background's as a coach. I understand. Coaches never feel good. You know, I was, we were in there just watching all these guys spraying champagne, and I'm like, how the hell are we going to play in our first game next year? <laughs> so I think that that's just the way that you think. But, um, you know, we knew that that wasn't us. And um, we also knew that Dallas is very good. And Dallas can do that to you. And, uh, I thought tonight the guys did a great job of making it as hard as they could on the two stars. And, and then even when the other guys made shots early, um, we were guarding so hard and attacking the rim so much that um, you know, we were putting a lot of pressure on them. Looking back to last summer as Drew gets mic'd up and, and eared up over there, um, what did you think the two moves for Holiday and, and Kristaps Porzingis would do for you this season that would lead you to this point and, and how did it play out or, or maybe surprise you along the way? Well I, I personally don't think you ever like you, you don't sit there and make a move and you say okay now we're going to win a championship you just know how hard it is I mean we've been on the precipice of it and on the doorstep of it but you know a lot of things had to go our way um, to win in, in other years in advance and you know some things didn't go our way but that's just part of it and you know there's a lot that goes into it being the last team standing is really hard and one, you know one of the things that I feel really good about in this moment right now is I don't think any less of I didn't think any less of Jalen Jason and everybody else that hadn't won one six days ago you know they're still the same guys they're still the same people they're special they're unique and we're just fortunate to be the last team standing. But still, you you pull off some incredible deals. Bringing a true vet like Holiday into this team, what he brings defensively. Bringing in Porzingis, guys that can really play on both ends of the court, and they give you that offensive versatility. Walk us through what those trade looks like, those talks, because when you look at the Porzingis deal, not only did you get Porzingis back, but you got a you got a draft pick back as well. You, you got the best player in that in that deal, and you're able to get a draft pick back. How did that go about? Well, there were a lot of moving parts on that one, and um, and we, you know, we had to part with a really good player um, and Marcus Smart, who meant a lot to us, and so that was a hard one. And you know, getting Drew, we had to part with guys that meant a lot to us, and Malcolm and Rob, and um, but that's those are the hard decisions. That's why, even though I know we're getting Drew Holiday, it still is like my stomach's in knots because I've got to call the other two, right? And um, that is not an easy position to be in, but you know, ultimately. What we're trying to do is surround ourselves with the best possible team. And one of the things that we think is a really important character trait is self-awareness. You know, knowing who you are, knowing what you do best, and being willing to do that for the good of the team. And I think that Drew is the best example of that maybe in the league. And, you know, Derek White's nipping at his heels. Chris Porzingis is nipping at his heels. Al is another great example, right? Like. We just we're loaded with guys that know who they are and um, and do it the right way, play the right way. That's why all the talk about the individual stuff. Who cares? Like this is team sport. We got to be a team moving in one direction. Drew, for me, you've been one of the most underrated players in the league for a long, long time. Obviously, and you've seen them from afar have a lot of success, but not get over the hump. You come into a new situation. How do you implement yourself? How do you approach coming in here? Um, I think I just did my best to see where I fit in. Uh, when I first came, I mean, Joe made it known what he what he expected out of me. And then from Jason to JB to Al to, to D. White, they all made it known what they expected out of me. So it made it really easy to come in here and, and just kind of gel. I mean, for me, guys like yourself and, and Derek White, because I'm a defensive guy and I'm a guy that loves. I mean, you can. I'm not. I'm not a defensive guy. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> we, we go back and forth about Occasionally you play. Occasionally. Every now and then. The offense is your defense. People, Coach has seen the scouting report. Man, people really don't know. Like, the NBA has so many pick and rolls, but to have a guy like you and Derek White who can get over, get under, or get through a pick and roll and just take a team out of their offense. How important that is and how tough that is obviously on you being a veteran who's been in this league so long but continues to still bring that. So for me, I don't have no questions. I just want to give you your flowers. <laughs> I just want to give you your flowers because I've played it. against you. It. I've competed against you and I know how hard it is yeah. when you guys get through those screens to get for a team to get action and get going. So yeah. kudos to you. Kudos to Derek Thank White. You, man, I love what y'all do. Thank Drew, you. I do have a question. We've got lots of questions. In fact, yeah. your coach is 35, right? He, he was thrust into this 
this position under unusual short-term circumstances. You come in after he'd been on the job a year. What did you learn about him and his ways that have gotten you where you are today? You know what? Um, so I was an All-Star last year, and that's actually where I first met Joe and got to talk to him. He was the, the coach of the All-Star team, um, talking to him about his faith, talking to him about going to Israel after, after he won or whatever. Um, but that was the first time that I really got to talk to him and really get to know him on a personal level outside of basketball, and, and, and that was pretty cool to experience. Now, the basketball side, he does do things a, a little different. Um, uh, I mean, Brad knows. Uh, the way that we practice and the things that we do, the attention to detail I've never experienced before, but he does it in a way that's, like, kind of crazy. Like, Can you give us an example? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, I mean, it's, we, we all family here, man. Have some no, fun, man. Let us know. No, you no, can let the just, count the back, man. You're a I mean, two-time champion. Through, we can go through half of practice just not dribbling the ball. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Just passing, getting open. And, and even though we're doing that, it's like we went back to the fundamentals. Those are things that you teach young kids to do. And even though we're – Professionals, like sometimes mm -hmm. we also need to do that. Where and and I feel like it, it brought us together as a team. It made us play play more. It made us make the right plays and and make the right passes for the next person. Aha! Mm -hmm. Habits. Yeah, <laughs> I habits. said it. They have great habits, and that's what he's talking about. Things yeah. like that. It takes mental toughness to go through a whole practice and not dribble and just keep passing and cutting and keep passing and cutting until you get the shot you want. They built those habits. It just it doesn't just happen on the game night or in the finals. This is something they've been doing and building since training camp. You've won titles now with two very different teams, both very good defensive teams, obviously. Is there a common denominator if you're telling somebody who's starting an NBA team what it takes to win a championship? Where do you begin? Uh, get Drew Holiday. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Thanks, one, Brad. I, one, one, yeah, appreciate you, Brad. Thank you for thank you for having me. Uh, one, I would say defense. Um, I feel like every champion for the last what ten or fifteen years, they've at least been in the top five in, in, in defense in the league. Um, and another thing, I just feel like is uh, having that cohesion on the on the court. Um, kind of like what you talked about, having those habits and building those habits. It didn't just start with the players. Like it started with Brad, it started with upper management and, and it trickled down. So um, those are probably the two keys I would say. And have fun playing. Have fun doing this because it's a lot this more is, fun when you win crazy. championships. Oh yeah, it's a lot more. A lot more. Real fun. Well I hope you can not stress about next season because you just you got a parade and you know you just want to think. At least enjoy tonight. Got to enjoy tonight. Enjoy tonight. Got to enjoy tonight. We will enjoy tonight. Right. Enjoy that tonight. draft workout tomorrow will be fun. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. I won't be there. <laughs> That's the I coach's mind going right there. there. Yeah, it He's is. punching the clock tomorrow morning. Who scheduled that? Wow. <laughs> Brad Stevens, Drew Holiday, congratulations.